Ba, 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 ba. Do, 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 do. Welcome to the preliminary 2017-2018 weather decoded winter forecast. And we are going to take a deep dive into forecasting temperatures and precipitation across the United States in this video. And I'm also going to go over a couple of key factors that could really impact this winter. And I also have a special contest as well. So let's get right into this episode of State of the Weather Address, the Winter Forecast Edition. Now, before we get started, I have a special contest, and that is how much snow will New York City see this winter? Okay, by the end of the winter, just go ahead and uh, comment your guess below. I'm going to pick a winner out of whoever was closest. I'm going to pick, you know, one winner out of that group, and they're going to get a signed print of this tornado photo. This is something I took a couple years back, so they'll get a print of that. Uh, mailed to them. So, all right, let's get right into the analysis here. And as a bit of a disclaimer, these winter forecasts being predicted this far out in advance, it's kind of like playing darts in a hurricane. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a shot in the dark, but we're going to go over them anyway here. The three key factors, Enzo, QBO, and then some other factors that will become more important as we get closer to the winter. All righty, here's uh, current sea surface temperatures right now. It's pretty warm out here. Uh, out in the Pacific, kind of cooling over here. That's going to be something to watch. This is going to be the key area we watch for uh, when forecasting our winter weather here, Enzo. And then we got some uh, warmer than average temperatures out in the Atlantic that's really drived a lot of these hurricanes and tropical storm systems to be very strong. And it's been a very uh, above average season. So that is the current sea surface temperatures. And we're going to get right into the Enzo here. And uh, ENZO stands for El Nino Southern Oscillation. It's where you get El Nino, La Nina. Okay, this is just the study of El Nino and La Nina. This is going to be the region we are going to really uh, watch here is the Nino 3.4 region. And we're going to sample some sea surface temperatures in this region. If you have above or below average temperatures that can really drive the patterns across the world and North America. So we're going to really uh, examine those sea surface temperatures in that area. So... What does the anomalies in the Nino 3.4 region look like? Well, values of 0.5 degrees of above average or greater for at least three months would indicate an El Nino. And values of negative 0.5 degrees, okay, that's 0.5 degrees below average or less than that would indicate a La Nina. Okay, and so here is the current uh, trends here. You can see that super El Nino right here in 2015. So here's our 0.5 line and our negative 0.5 line. You want to be okay, below that line for at least three months for a La Nina, and you want to be above this line for at least three months for an El Nino. And we certainly were in 2015, 2016, when we had that crazy super El Nino. And uh, since then, it's kind of fluctuated, you know, really mostly neutral since then okay we've been kind of neutral last winter and so far this winter but the latest the latest uh data is showing cooling in the ocean and we're gonna have to watch that to see if we go from a neutral to a la nina so we'll see what happens there and uh here's another another view of that this is the nino 3.4 region and this is uh, going monthly here this is july august september and you can see that cooling now all of a sudden it was a little bit above average there over the summer but now we're starting to get cool here's the 0.5 degree line we are just hitting that not quite there yet but just hitting that maybe just past it over the past couple of days but again we're going to need to see it consistently hit that negative 0.5 or, or go below that for a La Nina here. And uh, here's the sea surface temperature, and this is now looking at the anomalies. So is it above or below average? All of these blue, purple variables, that's below average. All of these yellow, orange variables, that is above average. And again, we're looking kind of in that region right there. And you can see that that cooling starting to kind of develop and it's actually starting to move towards the west okay and so we'll see how much that develops but definitely cooler than average here 
Uh, so, and warmer than average out here. And, and here's an animation of the uh, cooling that's happening out here. The western trade winds are really starting to strengthen right now, and that's really starting to build. The response under the ocean with this circulation, it's going to cause more upwelling. It's going to cause more cold water from below to rise, and that's going to cool the temperatures out here on the western or the eastern side here. And so where is it trending? Well, this is uh, the winter of 2014-2015. A little bit warm, but not terribly so. 2015-2016, you can see that Super El Nino very much above average. Last winter, it was a little bit cooler than average, but we kind of uh, fluctuated between neutral and La Nina, nothing crazy. And uh, so far this fall here, we've got even a little bit more aggressive cooling here, but it's really starting to develop out here, and it's starting to kind of work its way uh, towards the west and really deepen out here. More upwelling occurring. You're starting to get a circulation developing uh, a little bit stronger than it normally is. It very well is trending towards La Nina, but will it? What are the models predicting? Here's the CFS model, okay? This is us right now, as of this video, late September. Negative 0.5 degrees and below is going to be a La Nina for at least three months. Here's uh, the CFS model. I think it's been pretty finicky. This is the model that was actually forecasting El Nino earlier in the year. So now it's actually forecasting a La Nina. You can see it dips down below half a degrees below average by the time we get towards winter here. And that's the area we're going to be paying attention to. And it's got temperatures well above or well below average, indicating a at least a moderate La Nina here. Okay, so, and then it dips back up, or it goes back up towards the spring, towards a neutral. But I think the CFS is overdone. I also think it's finicky. Here's the uh, NMME model right here. Okay, these are going to be some plumes from some different models, but the dash one's the NMME. These are some other models. You can see the NNME is right here. This is December right here. This is March right here. It's pretty much borderline, looks borderline La Nina and neutral. But some of these models take it farther south and, and north of that line there. So the NNME seems to have a, I would agree with that a little bit more, but notice this is uh, as of this forecast right here, I think, right around here, it's actually a little bit cooler than what this model has. So it's actually verifying a little bit cooler so it could actually end up being a little bit cooler. We'll see what happens. Nonetheless, uh, we'll look at another uh, plume here of some different models. You can see there's that CFS model. It's one of the most aggressive models for the colder temperatures here. It would indicate a La Nina. All these other models kind of above that line. But the average is right on the La Nina to neutral line with maybe a La Nina start. Transitioning to a, a neutral by the time we get towards uh, you know February March, so we could we could start off La Nina for a month or two and then transition neutral, according to uh, the models here, and uh, just another version of that right there. So here's the probabilities. Okay, these are going to be the probabilities of a neutral El Nino and La Nina. This is uh, December, January, February. This is winter right here. Probabilities of a La Nina, about 55%. Probabilities of a neutral, about 45%. And probabilities of an El Nino, probably about 3% there. And then as we get towards the second half of winter here, February, March, April, neutral goes way up to about 65%. And then we can look at fall as well, November, December, January. La Nina is about a 55%. So... Again, I think, I think we could start off with a very weak La Nina for December, maybe January, transitioning to a neutral by the time February and March come around. So that, that's uh, what's going on with Enzo here. And uh, this is, uh, let's see, this is going to be the official forecast by the Climate Prediction Center. What do they think? Okay, the last one we were looking at was the models. Now we'll look at the... CPC, they think 60% La Nina. And then by the time we get to, to uh, late winter, early spring, 50%, 52% neutral. So it's kind of that La Nina to neutral 
look there. So that would be our end zone. Now, what does a typical neutral winner look like? Again, this is kind of what's going on here. We got the trade winds. This is typically what happens out in the ocean. You get the circulation. This is uh, going to be uh, South America over here, and this is going to be uh, getting towards Darwin over here. And the circulation creates uh, a response in the ocean, which creates cold water to come up towards the surface. But the circulation isn't overly strong. It makes it all the way over to Darwin, but it's not overly strong. With the La Nina, it's actually stronger, and that upwelling is stronger, and it cools the ocean on the western side. So, so here's your typical neutral pattern. The jet stream is going to get diverted into the northeastern United States, colder than average in the northern northeastern United States, wetter and warmer than average in the southern U.S., especially wetter out in the Tennessee Valley region. So that's what you're going to get with a... Uh, a neutral pattern. Here's a La Nina. You can see the colder than average temperatures out in the eastern Pacific. Stronger trade winds uh, will create a stronger upwelling response. Colder temperatures out there. Here's a La Nina, that jet being a little bit further north. Wetter than average in the Ohio Valley now and also the northwestern United States and dry and warm in the southern U.S. So that's kind of what happens during a La Nina winter. So that's our end zone. Now we're going to uh, focus in on the QBO. And what is that? That's the quasi-biennial oscillation. And this is another factor that we can kind of look out far in advance here for this winter. All right, let's get right into the forecast here. We're going to first look at the computer models. We're going to look at the CFS. It's been very finicky. Okay, so I'm kind of hesitant on this one. But here's the first half of winter, November, December, January, ridge these are the height anomalies, okay? Kind of a ridge out there out west. A little bit of troughing action out east. We'll look at the second half of winter here. And it cools a little bit up north. And that ridge kind of works a little bit farther to the west. And that trough kind of works a little bit farther to the west as well. So that's going to be the height anomalies. What's, what's it saying for temperatures for the first half of winter? Much above average for the western half of the United States. And average for the eastern half. As we get towards uh, later into the winter, cooler than average up north. Okay, it looks, there's that uh, colder than average ordeal up north with those neutral and La Nina type winters that looks kind of on par and much above average for the southern half of the United States. That looks a little bit more representative, although I think it's a little bit underdone on the cold. So precipitation wise, Above average on the northwestern United States, below average for the central and southern United States for the first half, the second half, you still get that above average for the northern United States, and now above average precipitation for the Tennessee Valley and for the Ohio Valley as well. All right, here's the CANSIVS model. It's a little bit more zonal with this uh, height anomalies here as we get into winter, but nonetheless, going to be a little bit warmer in the southern United States according to this model. And uh, there it is. Much above average temperatures for the first half of winter for the entire United States. And then second half of winter, it says the same thing pretty much. A little bit cooling in the northwestern United States. But I think this is overdone. I think this model overdoes that. Here's the precipitation. First half of winter above average northwestern United States. Second half, it's actually below average for the southeastern United States and maybe uh, just average everywhere else. All right, and now the NMME model. It also forecasts above average temperatures for much of the United States for uh, much of the winter with cooling building in later in the winter in the northwestern United States. <clears throat> Precipitation, above average northwestern United States. And as we get towards late winter, where it's going to be above average still out there and above average now in the Ohio Valley. This would indicate a little bit of a, a later winter for the northwestern United States, a later uh, start to that. So we're going to look at some of the analogs. Some of the analogs I've selected are 1956-57, 81-82, and 2013-2014. What does that look like? Well, those winters had below average temperatures for this area, especially in the northern United States. I think that QBO and that Enzo ordeal is going to make that area a little bit below average and then above average uh, for the southern United States. So that's how those winters played out. 
And precipitation wise, there wasn't a, as much agreement, but above average or below average precipitation for the southern United States, maybe working into the central US a little bit, and also to the southeastern United States with above average in the Tennessee Valley, maybe Ohio Valley, and certainly the northwestern half of the United States. So those were the analogs I selected, but they weren't perfect. But what is the CPC saying, the Climate Prediction Center? This is going to be a four point, or this is going to be the long range forecast. These are the temperature outlooks. This is for November, December, and January. They've got above average for much of the United States, with equal chances to the north. Uh, so they're pretty aggressive on that. The second half of winter still above average for the southern half of the United States and into the northeast. Precipitation wise, for the first half above average in the northwestern United States, below in the southern half or southern third, and then. Uh, you can see that above average precipitation starting to work into the Ohio Valley towards late winter and still remains out in the northwestern United States and below average for the southern United States. So that's a climate prediction center. Now what's my forecast? Putting this all together, this is what I got for winter temperatures. Again, this is preliminary. This is going to be from December through March. Winter temperatures going to be below average for this area right here with uh, or slightly below average with more moderate below average out you know as we get towards the great lakes minnesota wisconsin that's where you're going to see some arctic outbreaks occur this winter some some nasty ones so above average temperatures for much of the southern united states and we could have much above average in the desert southwest and potentially towards florida as well so that's going to be the temperatures and then the precipitation this is going to be factoring in snow of course too i think i'm going to Call for above average for the northwestern United States with potentially much above average in Washington, parts of Oregon, maybe Idaho as well. The Ohio and Tennessee Valley, slightly above average winter precipitation and snowfall. And below average for probably the entire southern one-third of the U.S. with equal chances kind of in between here. So that is going to be uh, the winter precipitation. Again, these are preliminary. These are going to probably change, but that is my forecast for uh, the 2017-2018 winter. So with all that being said, again, we have a contest that we're doing, and it's how much snow will NYC see this winter, okay? Comment below your guess, and I'm going to pick out of whoever was closest, if there's a time, I'm going to pick one person out of that group and I'm going to send them a signed copy of one of the prints I took uh, a couple of years back. So that's going to be a reward. And so make sure to do that. And also, if you want more of these videos, more of these forecasting videos and forecasting tutorials, go ahead and click the subscribe button. should be below this video, those, that red big, big old red button. Click the subscribe button. I'll be releasing more of these videos and more winter forecasting updates. And we're probably going to be doing some live streams as we get towards winter and uh, in the spring as well. So with all that being said, hope you enjoyed today's uh, video and I'll see you soon.